there, Lou. How come you always put me under this ladder? Just coincidence. I can't. I certainly can't be underneath. I don't really feel very lucky under this. Oh, it's thing. fine. Hey, did you know that in September there's a Friday the Thirteenth? Oh my God! So today we're going to give you some weird superstitions. Forgot the word there. Weird superstitions explained. Where they come from? Ooh, How do we get that? I can't wait. Let's do it next. Hello and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Freaking Smart. Yep. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. And we're glad that you're here today. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your subscriptions to our channel. Many of our long-lasting superstitions, like avoiding ladders, Friday the 13th, or spilling salt. My mom used to always do that oh, for yeah. it on her shoulder. Yep. They date back centuries and have surprising origin stories, which we are about to share with you. So, Friday the 13th. Let's just start right off with that one. All right. Uh, the stigma attached to Friday the 13th is widely believed to have biblical roots. The number 12 is seen in many cultures as the sort of perfect number, and adding one more to that throws things off a bit. Uh, according to the Bible, Judas was the 13th Apostle. guest to arrive mm -hmm. uh, at the Last Supper. And Friday was widely believed to be the day Jesus was crucified. Uh, but that's since been brought into question. Hmm. Uh, similarly, in Norse, myth uh, Norse mythology, Loki was the 13th guest to arrive at a dinner for the gods in Valhalla and wreaked havoc on the whole event. You that, did that once. That crazy Loki. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that one. Loki is loco. You know, the shenanigans. <laughs> the Friday superstition also has origins in the U.S. where, in the 19th century, all executions took place on Fridays. That's not fair, because all guys got executed had to eat fish. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be here. We can tip the waitress, but don't tip her over. There's even a word for people who fear Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah, my God. I've heard this. Frig, I can't even. We're going to have to put it on the website. All right. It's 16 syllables, at least. <laughs> Breaking a mirror. Oh. You know, it falls off the counter. It shatters into a billion pieces. What does that mean? Well, ancient Romans believed that mirrors held pieces of your soul. This, coupled with the myth that our body renews itself every seven years, I didn't know that, fueled the superstition that breaking a mirror means you are damning your soul to seven years of bad luck. Boy, that explains a lot. Dang. In my life. You've broken a lot of mirrors, haven't you? Evidently. <laughs> I didn't know, but I guess I did. Uh, this next one is Groundhog's Day. That's a bunch of crap. It seems pretty innocuous. Uh, animals predicting the weather was adapted from German culture where oh, settlers arrived in the U.S. and chose Pennsylvania as their home. The old uh, Candlemas Day tradition in Germany involved members of the clergy distributing blessed candies which were used to determine how long the winter weather would last. Animals were also observed to see how long their hibernation periods lasted. Germans, hey, I'm German, by the way. Sorry, uh, I'll speak slower. Closely tracked uh, badgers and found groundhogs to be the next best thing. So what? Two guys were sitting around one night drinking far too much German beer. Yeah. And they see this groundhog. Yeah. And they think, you know what? Let's start a tradition. If that groundhog sees his shadow, we drink six more beers. I'm, I'm up for that. And then somewhere along the line, someone thought, hey, maybe that means summer. Right. It's all a bunch of crap, if you ask me. It's hooey, I'll tell you. A ground dog. It's a bunch Please. of hooey. Great movie. <laughs> that is a good movie. All right. Next up on our list, a black cat crossing your path. I will tell you that in my life, I have not had good luck with black cats. Many cultures throughout history actually regarded all cats as good luck omens but black kitties got a bad rap in the Middle Ages when they were associated with witchcraft and actually viewed as demons. 
My cat is a demon. You should see my arm. <laughs> Show it to Ronnie. Yes. That demon thing snowballed into an idea that if a black cat crossed your path, they were blocking your connection to God and your path to heaven. It's a freaking cat. Yeah. So my mom, when a black cat crossed in front of us, she would kind of like pretend spit. She would go. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. She would spit, well, pretend spit, yeah. on the ground right in front of us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. She was German. Germans do crazy things, apparently. Uh, this, yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not German. This next one, blessing a sneeze. Man, people at work do this every day. I'm so tired of it. Yeah. It's just a sneeze. Well, and this could also, in, in German, what do you say? Gesundheit. Gesundheit. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell that means, but uh, something. Uh, it's because a reflex to bless someone after they sneeze uh, becomes a habit. Uh, little do you know, you could be saving them from damnation. Right. Oh, I'm sure. You know, in spite of the fact that they've got all of this stuff in their history of wrongdoing and shenanigans. There's that word again. Yeah, all they have to do is sneeze. And I bless them and they're forgiven. Bless you. You're forgiven. Oh, that seems great. Uh, this custom originated with an old superstition that a person's soul separated from their body when they sneezed. Like in the cartoons when the second one comes out. Of the yeah. <laughs> Saying bless you was a way to keep the devil from swooping in to steal their soul before they recovered. Now, I also heard that when you sneeze, your heart stops. Yeah, I've heard that. For a split second. Mm -hmm. So, guess what? My heart stops all the time. <laughs> Watching the 49ers play. Or, yeah. Oh, and yep. you know, it's not like that devil doesn't have anything else to do. Right. Not waiting around for you to sneeze, no. to swoop in. No. He's busy. He's got things going on. Yeah, there's a lot of good things Yeah, going on. Jeff Epstein. <laughs> Too soon? No. Right on time. Walking under a ladder. This one has a morbid beginning. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh-oh. Back in medieval times, ladders were associated with the gallows where people were hanged. Ooh. A person who made the mistake of walking under a ladder was believed to be facing their own death by hanging in the near future. Ooh, wow. There was also the belief that people, that because people were hanged from the top of the ladder, the area underneath was haunted. That's where their spirits went. Dang. That Can does... you move the ladder for next week? Uh, I kind of like it there. There's not a lot of room in this garage. <laughs> I can tell. I mean, yeah. studio. Yeah. There's, Sorry. There's no room for the ladder anyplace else. Okay. Next, knocking on wood. Uh, ancient pagans used to believe that there were spirits living in the trees, and knocking on the trunks would summon them for protection. Hmm. Uh, the gesture was also used to thank them when something good happened. The tradition later took shape in other cultures. Some Christians associated the tradition with uh, the cross, and Jews associated it with knocking on the wooden doors of synagogues while seeking shelter during the Spanish Inquisition. Inquisition. So now it's more of a, hey, knock on wood. That's it's kind of a good luck thing, I yeah. think. Yeah. But you know what? You, you rarely actually have wood to knock on. I don't know. It's for mica. Yeah. I don't, well, I, board. My ramps, there are wood. That's about the only wood in this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Those things are heavy. Yeah, they are. Opening umbrellas indoors. Oh, my mom hated that. I know. Mine, too. You can thank the ancient Egyptians, Egyptians, <laughs> for this bad omen. They used umbrellas to protect themselves from the sun, but opening them indoors was considered an insult to the sun god. Bob. I think it's Bob the sun god. <laughs> I think it might be Ra, but I'm not sure. I don't uh, it know. could be. It was equally as offensive to open one in an area that wasn't sunny. Huh. Another theory traces it back to the 18th century of England when the mechanics of the modern umbrella made them straight up dangerous when opened in close quarters. They had that point on the end. And you put somebody's eye out. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yep. And then, and then where are you? Freaking got to wear a patch like a pirate. <laughs> okay, finding a penny, and this goes beyond that. It's got to be heads up. Yeah. Yeah, you uh -huh. can't you can't pick up a tails penny. Don't. No. Most people wouldn't consider a single cent on the ground to be good fortune, but back in ancient times, it was quite the find. 
Uh, old civilizations believed that uh, to find any metal on the ground was a gift from the gods. Some people believe holding on to the penny will bring good luck, and others think the good luck comes when you give the penny away. Either way, that's a lot of value to place on one penny. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't bend over for anything less than a dollar bill. Oh, it'd have to be at least a quarter for me. I just, I just can't even, I don't, I don't like to bend over that much anyway. Yeah. Got to be a buck. Well, you know, this is kind of weird and, and off the, the subject here a little bit, but um, it's all in what people hear and what they think and it, how they convince themselves of these things. It's, you know, whether your parents brought you up on this kind of right. an idea. And generationally speaking, it just keeps going down the line. Um, and you know what? Sometimes you make up things just to make you feel good. And I'll tell you what I do. And I'm being perfectly honest because that's what we do on this show. We're honest with you. A lot of times when I'm out in the garage, which is almost all the time, I see a butterfly go by, a beautiful butterfly go by, and I think it's my mom. Oh, yeah. Just paying a little visit, just letting me know she's there and watching over things and making sure that, you know, everything's okay with the kids and stuff. It, because there aren't that many butterflies in my neighborhood that I see. No. It, it doesn't hold true for a moth. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. And somebody else. My Aunt Ellie. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to know her. Um, but if it's a beautiful butterfly, I like to believe, and I've convinced myself, that it's my mom. And it makes me feel better, so what's wrong with it? That's what I'm saying about these things here. Can't, can't blame you. All right, uh, next up, spilling salt. That's what my mom did. There are a couple of reasons why spilled salt is supposedly bad luck. The simple explanation is that salt was once used as an expensive trading commodity, so spilling it was just plain wasteful. The other theory is that it was considered a magical substance in ancient times where it was used to perform rituals. Spilling it meant you were inviting the devil in. Oh. And you know what? Damn. Even if it's his bowling night, he comes in. Yeah. That's the thing about that devil. He's you relentless. Watch him. Relentless like that. All right. This next one, beginner's luck. I'm going to tell you a story I had about beginner's luck. Okay. Okay. After this. This gambling superstition is rooted in a psychological term called confirmation bias. Oh, that sounds like a Fen thing. Uh, it was actually a flip side show. Yeah. Sean did a little show on it. Uh, it's the theory that if you have some preconceived idea about something, your mind is on the lookout for evidence to back that up. In this case, losing at a game against someone who has never played before sticks out in your mind more than all the other times you won. Now, as soon as I turned 21, my friend Mark Bertolucci took me up to Lake Tahoe. And he was actually, he was a year older than I was. But we, were, we were pretty good buds in high school. Uh, so, turned 21, we go up to Lake Tahoe. We're at the now defunct and gone High Sierra. Oh, yeah. And I'm playing quarters. And I kept hitting this jackpot that was $20 and 80 cents, I think it was, over and over and over and over again. I would put in two or three, and at that time it was just one quarter at a time, pull the handle. Right, you win or you don't. You win or you don't. $20.80 over and over and over and over again. Um, to the point where I said, hey, I'm going to buy you lunch. So we went to the buffet. They had a buffet at High Sierra. We're standing in line at the buffet. And, of course, they have machines there in line. Oh, yeah. And actually, I think it was probably $20.75 because I had all these quarters in my pockets from hitting. They would give you a $20 bill and then three quarters. I had all these quarters in my pockets my idea was just to get rid of all the quarters. I start feeding it, and I hit a $100 jackpot waiting in line to buy him lunch. He said, I will never go gambling with you again. You're sucking up all the luck. Yes. You're sucking it up. You're that was beginner's luck. Sucking out a life out of Mark, <laughs> poor guy. Four leaf clovers, bunch of crap. Next. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rabbit's foot. Bunch of crap. Crap. Next. Wasn't lucky for the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame me because the rabbit done died. 
Bad things happen in threes. My mother used to say this all the time. And you know, you, uh, you're just per perpetrating the this myth that things happen in three, grasping at straws, people die in threes. This is another one you could chalk up to confirmation bias. People have a tendency to take notice of the bad stuff to support this theory. But in actuality, there is usually the same balance of good and bad stuff happening to a person at any given time. It's just, it's a bunch of crap. Okay, now, I played a little poker. I played a lot of poker. Okay. Dead man's hand. Oh yeah, aces and eights. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's considered bad luck in poker to be dealt a two pair hand consisting of black eights and black aces, regardless of the whole card. Uh, the dead man's hand got its name because according to legend, they were cards held by Wild Bill Hickok yep. when he was murdered in the Old West in 1876. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, like I said, I played a little poker. I don't. Th First of all, I don't think I've ever been dealt this hand. Uh, I've never had it. So. And I've played a lot of hands. <laughs> I have. I, I even played in the World Series of Poker. Did you really? Yes, I did. Holy at crap. one of their satellites. Um, Dang. My first hand that I was dealt is called On Broadway. And it's a straight, but not a flush, royal flush. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was like, $1,000. <laughs> fold, <laughs> fold, fold. <laughs> yes, that happens. <laughs> oh, I got so excited. <laughs> Wishing on shooting stars. You ever do that, Ronnie? Uh, yeah. I yeah. don't know if I believe in yeah. that. Wishing on them goes way back further than B.O.B. What? The first century, yes, first philosopher, Ptolemy, believed that when meteors occurred, it meant that the gods were looking down and paying attention to Earth and thus available to be pelted with wishes. There you go. That's mm. crap. Yeah. It's all crap. Seems like crap. Yeah. All right. So I got a buddy that takes me fishing with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Al. Mm -hmm. And he's got a beautiful boat. And I usually try to bring some snacks along. I mean, he's, you know, it's his boat. I, I do pay for the gas, but it's still his boat and wear and tear, and he's got to do all the hard work. Eh, I'll pack a lunch. So the very first time I went there, I had a couple bananas for us. And he goes, absolutely not, no bananas on the boat. That's this next one. Bananas on a boat are unlucky. I've never heard this before in my entire life, and I was around boats as a child. Al knows it. Uh, among superstition, among seafaring folks, Bananas are taken very seriously. No one's quite sure how exactly the fear got started. Theories include the notion that spiders and snakes would Trojan horse on board amid the bunches, uh, or that the ethylene gas emitted by bananas as they ripen would spoil the other perishables. Now, that makes a little bit of sense. Yes. Uh, but some still say it's very seriously taken, going so far as to ban Banana Republic Guard <laughs> Or banana boat sunscreen. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Nah, huh? It's a little over the top. The Ides of March. I think we'll wrap up with this one, Ronnie. The Ides of March. In early Roman calendars, Martitius, or March, was the first month of the year, and dates were expressed by lunar phases as calends, cal, nuns, non, and Ides, id. Ides of March referred to the first full moon of the year. Full moons have their own association with bad juju, but the real negative context of March 15th started, you may know this, with the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. A two brute. Serious. Our centuries later, the day continued to be marred by everything from catastrophic weather uh, to the cancellation of the Ed Sullivan show. Really? Did not know that. Right here, here and I, oh, oh, right dang. here. All right, wow. Ronnie, these are some of the uh, myths that we all have grown up with. And as you can see, none of these make very much sense. And why we continue to propagate them, I don't understand. Uh, it just gets passed from generation to generation. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it stop. Just stop it, people. Yeah. Okay. Except uh, the latter thing. <laughs> That's... That seems real to me. <laughs>
Every week, I gotta go under the ladder. What is that? All right, that's gonna do it for us today. We appreciate that you watched, and we hope you had a good time, enjoyed, and learned a few things. Uh, we do this show for you a couple times a week. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click that notification bell because that way you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out. And yeah. lately, it's kind of hit and miss. Yeah. We'll do better. We'll try. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we will hope to see you on the very next Men Are So Smart. Yesterday, Jeannie, my work wife, went out to check the mail and she comes back and she goes, well, that's a fine, how do you do? I go, what? And she goes, somebody looks, left what looks like a bag of poop out by the mailbox. <laughs> and I go, are you kidding me? She goes, no. And she goes back in her office. About five minutes later, I went back in her office. I go, well, I checked, it's not mine. <laughs> 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 but it's somebody that ate corn recently. Yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know how much of that we got, but that might be an outtake. <laughs>